Hello, how's it going? All right, this is weird. I'm normally used to looking at a camera. And, uh, you know, so, all right, I got, uh, I got about 20 minutes, and I have 18 super sneaky marketing hacks that you guys can use today. So I'm going to just dive right into this. It's, uh, it's going to be kind of quick. So just a little bit about me. Uh, like I said, my name is Andy Stickle. I own a marketing agency called Social Firestarter. Uh, I oversee the marketing of about 50 law firms nationwide. Uh, who here is in my Facebook group? So, all right, a lot of people. <laughs> all right, cool. So you see that I have the Lawyer Marketing Facebook group. I put a ton of content out there. Uh, I wrote the book, How to Get More Law Firm Clients uh, Without Losing Time and Money or Getting Screwed by a Marketing Company. Everybody should have a copy of that in your, uh, in your bags today. Uh, I also have a YouTube channel where I've got about, I don't know, close to 300 videos where I teach lawyers actionable strategies about how you can get clients for your law firm. And that's kind of what I'm all about. I'm not about vague stuff. What I try to do is I try to teach uh, actionable takeaways with every video, and that's what this presentation is all about. So it's going to be really quick. It's going to be 18 actionable things that you can do to get more clients today. Uh, I'm also the anti-marketer. I'm sick of all the bad information out there from marketing companies. I'm sure that since we've been sitting here, you've all gotten about 25 or 30 emails from people promising to get you on page one of Google. I hate that, and uh, I think it's annoying. I think everybody hates that, so I'm, I'm against that, and that's why I do what I do. So. These slides, I'm going to go really fast. You can go to lawyerslides.com and get all of my slides, and it's got all the tips. Um, or just take a picture of the slide real quick. That QR code will pull up, uh, take you right to the website. Uh, this will all be, also be available at the end of the presentation. All right, hack number one, social proof is your absolute best friend. Testimonials, things like that. We have a client in Chicago. Actually, it's not a client anymore. We had a client. They're a bankruptcy attorney. They rank number one for Chicago bankruptcy attorney, Chicago cha uh, chapter 11, uh, you know, all the different... Uh, bankruptcy keywords that you would want to rank for. But they weren't getting phone calls. They were ranking in the map. So we started taking a look at their, at their listings, and we realized they only had five testimonials. They only had five reviews on their Google profile. So what we, and, and we also noticed that the other two lawyers that were in the maps, one of them had 10, uh, 10 testimonials, another one had 15 reviews. So I gave my client a homework assignment. I was like, you need to go out and you need to get 20 reviews. So you have a total of 25 reviews. Because I had this theory that if they had the most reviews, then they would get the phone calls. Because I don't know about you, whenever I'm on Amazon, if there's two products that are similar, similar rating, similar product, similar price, the first thing I do is I look at how many reviews does each thing have. So uh, the one that has more reviews typically is the one that I buy. So I kind of figured that maybe people treat lawyers like this as well. So. They went out, they actually listened to me, they actually got the reviews, they got 25 reviews the next week, and the following week was the busiest week in the history of their law firm. And the only thing that changed was the fact that they got these 25 reviews. So social proof is your best friend. I also use social proof everywhere I go. So uh, I, I hate going to conferences, and a lot of times I see conferences and I see these strategies that sound good, but a lot of times I try it and it doesn't work. Um, or the speakers don't necessarily, uh, I don't know, I just, I just feel like it's not the there's, there's no credibility behind there. So I try to use social proof with everything that I do. So uh, I, I'm going to include some, some testimonials of people that have actually used the strategies that I'm going to show you so I can show you that they do work and that if you actually take them, they will work really well. So uh, here's a guy named Brian. He read the strategy that I put in my book, which you all got a copy of my book, about how to get clients to leave you reviews when they actually say they will. Uh, who here has ever had a client that has said, oh yeah, thanks for, thanks for this bajillion dollar settlement. I'm gonna go leave you a great review and then it never shows up. Has that ever happened or is that unique? Okay, yes, yeah, a few people. So there's a few ways to make it so that people will actually leave you reviews. And the cool thing is, is that you can actually, when you get these reviews, you'll actually get better rankings in Google as well. So what I always do and what I tell my clients to do is you have to send them questions that are gonna make their job easier and make it easier for them to leave reviews for you. And not only this, but when you have certain semantic keywords, basically related keywords and synonyms to the practice area and the geographical location that you're, that you're practicing in, you'll also rank higher in your Google reviews. So here's the questions that I always tell people to send. And uh, you'll get a copy of these if you go to lawyerslides.com or you can take a picture. But the, the, the questions are always, what was the problem you had coming to the law firm? Where do we represent you? That's how you get the city and state in there. 
Um, why did you choose our firm? What did you like about working with our firm? What was the outcome of your case? And how, was it, how has your life changed since achieving this outcome? The last question is very important because you always want to show people how their life is, or you want to show others how their life has improved since getting the result that you got them. Really important. Another thing is that, and this is kind of controversial every time I tell people this, you've got to incentivize people to give reviews because of the fact that at the end of the day, everyone has a what's in it for me mentality. So uh, that's, that's the main reason why you say, hey, would you mind leaving me a Google review? And they say, yeah, sure, I'll definitely do it. And then they just go home, they don't do it. They go home and, and life gets in the way, kids are screaming, all that type of stuff, or they can't remember, God forbid, they can't remember their Yelp password, uh, and they just don't leave you a review. So what you need to do is you need to incentivize them. And again, a little controversial, but we have clients who will give out Starbucks gift cards, tar Target gift cards, uh, Outback Steakhouse gift cards. There's not a lot that people won't do for a blooming onion these days. So basically, you know, you just have to incentivize them. And the reality is that it's just as difficult for your competition to get these reviews as it is for you. And if they have 100 and you only have five, then you've got to get to work because they figured out a way to do it and you've got to do it as well. So if you incentivize people, if you thank them for their taking the time to leave a review, not necessarily leaving a five-star review, but thank them for taking the time to leave a review, then you'll get much, much better results. We have a client in Pasadena who they went from zero rev reviews to 48 reviews in about three weeks just by giving out Starbucks gift cards. So it works really well. And th that was like three or four years ago. They still get ridiculous amounts of phone calls just because of that. All right, hack number four. If you don't have a big marketing budget, get an awesome business card. This is my business card right here. And what I like about this card is every time I give it out, the first thing anybody says to me is, wow, that's a really cool business card. And the reason this card is so cool is because nobody ever gives out business cards like this. Everyone that gives out business cards, and I'm sure most of you, you just kind of have the white paper business card that's the same as everybody else, right? So the difference with these cards is they're, they're plastic. They feel like a credit card. This one's cool because it's see-through. I had it designed on Fiverr.com, so it cost me only five bucks to get it designed. And I get them from PlasticPrinters.com. Uh, I'm not affiliated with plastic printers, but basically, what happens, this, this business card alone has made me hundreds and hundreds of thousands, thousands of dollars because people feel bad throwing them away. I've actually had people tell me, I've gone to two lawyers' offices six months after giving them this business card, and I've asked them, why do you still have it? And they say, because I, I, I felt bad throwing away because it was so nice. So I've got a bunch of these. Just come up to me during the presentation. I'll give you a business card so you can see what, it, see what it's all about. Um, but you've got to do something different. Everyone you know, all of your competition is giving out the exact same business card. When you're not there, your business card is the only thing that is going to allow people to remember who you are and actually make you stand out. So you've got to make it count. Now, these are more expensive. They're probably about, it depends how many you buy, but they're about a dollar per card. So what I always tell lawyers is have two sets of cards. If there's cards that you're going to give out to prospects, give them these. And I get these from plasticprinters.com. Don't cheap out. Make sure to do plasticprinters.com because I've, I've bought cheap ones and they, they're crap. So... Uh, and then have a second set of cards when you're just giving to people that aren't necessarily going to hire you, like the ones you get from Vistaprint or wherever. Hack number five, everyone opens lumpy packages. <laughs> so, okay, uh, quick story. Uh, about two years ago, I started getting all these letters about my tax lien problem. Uh, and it was news to me because I didn't know I had a tax lien problem. Um, so it was all these attorneys that were uh, sending me the same letters in a regular envelope. It said, Law Smith of, insert the law, the law firm name. Um, and it turns out that my accountant, excuse me, my ex-accountant uh, forgot to file our California tax returns for 2012, 2013, and 2014. You know, oops. So anyway, um, what happened was I got, started getting letters, same letters, lawyer after lawyer after lawyer, all of a sudden these letters, hey, let us help you with your tax lien. So I opened the first one because I was curious what it was. And then I called my accountant. I was like, hey, you need to handle this. And then I threw all the other ones away. And, but there was no reason for me to open any of them. And then a couple days later, I got a letter. I got a package from Vistaprint. Has anyone gotten the thing where they send you the free pen in the mail for your business? Who here did not open that package? OK, everybody opened the package. So the hardest thing about sending this mail, whether you send people who have opened, um, uh, filed for bankruptcy or pre-foreclosure or got arrested or whatever you're sending uh, uh, letters to, 
you've got to get them to open the package. That's the most important thing of the game. And once again, just like the business card, you want to stand out. So what you need to do is make it a lumpy package. Put a pen in there. Put a stress ball in there. Put whatever you can to make them open the package because curiosity will get the best of them, and that will make them open the package, and you have a better chance of getting them to call you and book a consultation and then retain you if they actually look at your stuff. And you're not wasting your money either. Some people are, are going to, you know, it's going to cost a little bit more money than just spend, just sending a regular uh, uh, letter. But, you know, if, if you look at actual return on investment, this is way, way better. All right. Hack number six. Add, I will call you back in 15 minutes to the end of your voicemail message. Now, uh, I want to preface this by saying your phone should never, ever, 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 ever go to voicemail. Get a... Uh, answering service. But if the stars align and for some reason the phone goes to voicemail, if you don't have something like this in your voicemail, um, you're not going to get the lead. Think about it this way. If, you're a pl uh, if, you're, if your toilet is overflowing and you call a plumber and the plumber says, hi, this is plumber Frank. I'm not here. Uh, leave me a message and I'll call you back. Are you going to leave a message or are you going to hang up and call the next plumber? Most people are going to call the next plumber, right? And a lot of times when people call a lawyer, it's an emergency situation. It's almost like dialing 911. Somebody's been arrested. Somebody's been in an accident. Somebody's been killed. Something, something along those lines. And people want to talk to somebody now. Their problems are immediate. So they're not going to take the chance of just leaving you a message. But if you give them an expectation, if you say, hey, this is attorney John Smith. I can't talk to you. Right, or I can't pick up the phone right now, but I do want to talk to you. Call, leave your name and information, and I will call you back within 15 minutes. Then what you can do, you'll, you'll, you'll get much, many more people will actually leave the information because they have that expectation of getting back to them within 15 minutes. Now, I know that you're not going to always get back to them within, fi within 15 minutes. It's not realistic. But it's better to beg for forgiveness while talking to them than never getting the lead in the first place because most people will not leave voicemails. Uh, another thing, get rid of the phone tree. How many people here like calling your bank? Who, who loves just calling and talking to the press one for this and press two for that? Your clients hate it too. Get rid of the phone tree. We doubled our client's intake in a single month. We didn't even, he didn't even increase his phone, his phone calls. All he did was switch to an answering service that actually had somebody picking up the phone rather than the press one for this, press two for that, press three for this. Um, a lot of people always ask me about answering services. We always use Voice Nation and Answer First for our clients. Um, they're, I don't, I, they're, they're not bad. They're not the best ones out there. I've never tested them all, but you know, if you need two recommendations, these are two that, that are solid that we've used. And again, I don't get paid from them. All right, so let's talk about Facebook marketing. I've got some really good Facebook marketing hacks that I want to show you guys about. Um, Jim, Aspin, Jim Aspill gave me a testimonial. Um, basically, what he was talking about is he just watched a lot of my videos, followed my plan, and that's how he got clients from social media. So hack number eight is advertise solutions to small problems. A lot of times people just want to run an ad for yourself. And that's not, pe people don't care. People don't go to Facebook uh, to, to, to learn about you. What you want to do is you want to create solutions to small problems that your ideal clients have. And then when they, have, uh, when they need an attorney for the bigger problem, that's when they'll call you. And you've already got kind of a warm introduction to them. So for example, we had a traumatic brain injury client or a client who's trying to get traumatic brain injury cases. So we created a guide to help people set up GoFundMe campaigns because when someone gets injured, usually they can't work and they need to make money. So we created a guide that teaches people how to set up GoFundMe campaigns so that their loved ones and their family members can help them pay for their medical bills. So what we did is we ran ads straight to that, straight to that campaign, and we taught people how to do that. Uh, and that works really well because then it makes the warm introduction, and then when they actually need to hire an attorney for the personal injury matter, then they contact him. Uh, we also have, for bankruptcy attorneys, we did one. It was, how to, it was just a guide, and I talked to Walter about this, uh, how to get bill collectors to stop calling because that's one of the biggest things. Pe nobody wants a bankruptcy, right? But they want certain things. They want the bill collectors to stop calling them 24 hours a day. So if you help them solve a small problem, then you've given them some goodwill, and, that will, and then they'll hire you for the bigger problem. This works so well. It works all the time. We do it all the time for our clients. All right, uh, next thing, when running Facebook ads, use pattern interrupts. And I'll show you what a pattern interrupt is here. Who, who here has ever seen any of my ads on Facebook ever? All right, so you probably recognize these then, right? Because <laughs> I, the I do the same thing all the time. 
Uh, I always have at the very top, hey, lawyers. What I'm always doing, that's the pattern interrupt. I'm always calling out the demographic of, of who I'm, I'm targeting. So in the first three words, it better say something like car accident or, you know, hey, lawyers, or, um, you, know, you know, going through a divorce is difficult. Whatever it is, you want to make sure that they see that. I also use a big red bar that says, hey, lawyers, because red is not a Facebook color. I, you always want to look at the colors that contrast with the platform that you're on. So YouTube has, has red, so I would use blue probably on YouTube. But these three things, and then the bottom, the, 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 the headline, these three things are the things that I always test in all of my Facebook ads, and these are the things that if you're going to test anything and pay, pay special attention to anything in your Facebook ads in terms of getting people's attention to get them to stop scrolling and look at your stuff, it's these things right here. So you've got to pay attention to these pattern interrupts. All right. This one is for Jim Hacking, immigration attorneys. <laughs> All right. How can you target immigration attorneys? Uh, sorry, not immigration attorneys. How can you target clients if you're an immigration attorney that uh, maybe you're trying to go for people that are in the United States? The way you can do that is by targeting celebrities that are famous in the target countries. So, for example, according to MrBloggers.com, uh, the, this guy named Sean Roon Khan, never heard of him before, but he is the most famous celebrity in India. So. If we're running a campaign for something like H-1B visas, and we're trying to get people, Indians that are living in the United States, and we're trying to get in front of their Facebook page, what we would do is we would target this guy for people, you know, people that like this guy that live in the United States. And if you look at the targeting here, you can see, it's kind of small enough you can see it, but there's 35 million people that like this guy, that have an interest in this guy, and 61% of them live in India. So that means that this guy is pretty popular in India. So when someone moves from India and comes here, their interests don't go away. They still have all those interests that they liked when they, went, when they lived in India. So you can target people that are famous in countries, uh, in the home countries of the types of people that you're targeting. It works really well. We do that all the time. Uh, another thing you can do, target clients based on recent location. So injury attorneys, you can drop a pin on Facebook and you can say anyone that's been within one mile of the hospital or within a walk-in clinic within the last seven days, show them these ads. Criminal defense attorneys, you can do jails, you can do police stations, you can do things like that. Um, probate attorneys, you can drop on, on funeral homes. We did this for, uh, for Russ and it worked okay. Um, and then you can also be creative. Uh, be creative, like if you're a contractor, uh, if you're targeting contractors, uh, if you're a business attorney, target people that go to Home Depot, you know? <laughs> you can do a lot of different things. So there was one always, so, so what you got to do is you go into Facebook and at the top, there's a couple different options. You always want to select people recently in this location. And then you just put the address of the location in there and then select one mile radius. So that will get people that are anywhere from that, that, that within the last seven days have been within one mile of that location. Now, we've always had a problem though. It always worked kind of well, but it was always kind of hitting way too many people because of that one mile radius. So a hospital you know, it might only be, I don't know, 20 acres or, or, or whatever, but you're, you're targeting everyone that's been within a one mile radius. So for a long time, I was trying to figure out how do we, how do we exclude everyone else? And it kind of dawned on me one day, what you do is you have to set negative locations. And this is really, really uh, ninja level stuff <laughs> that, that, that works really well. What you do is you click on the bottom right there, you're going to click drop a pin. And then you just kind of eyeball it and you just keep dropping pins. And then you, uh, on the right of the, of the, the, the locations, there, there's, a, there's an arrow. And you just click exclude this location. So now if you zoom in, you can see that the entire area except for the hospital is excluded. So this is how you turn that one mile radius into, you know, within like 500 feet of the hospital. And this works really, really well. All right, hack number 12, create immediate responses to events as they happen. Now, this kind of uh, goes off of what, uh, what Mitch was talking about with the news jacking, but we kind of took it a step further. Uh, this is an actual ad that we ran um, in Hoboken. There was a train crash a couple years ago. It's 2006. So what we did is we had our client do, do some commentary, basically, uh, you know, give his opinion um, on why the train ca crash should have not happened. Um, you know, there should have been a braking system installed that wasn't installed, and because of this, uh, the train crash happened, and a bunch of people got injured, a bunch of people got killed. So what we did is we went back, we took that, we took that blog post, we ran it as a Facebook ad, and we ran it to people that are, were at the location, or we, we used that recently at 
or recently at this location section on Facebook. We dropped the pin right there, and everyone that was at that location within the last seven days, including everyone that was there today who was in the car or was in the train crash, saw that ad. And the result was he ended up getting like three or four clients just from that train crash. A um, couple months ago, or a couple months later, the same thing happened in Long Island. There was a train crash in Long Island. We did the exact same thing. And again, he got like three or four clients out of it. So this really works. It's news jacking and location jacking, I guess you would call it. But it works really well. All right, so um, everybody that came here, if you got a bag, I gave everybody a free 24-part video series that teaches you step-by-step -step how to get your law firm ranked in the Google Maps. It's, uh, it, I mean, it's literally over my shoulder, over my screen, and everybody has a copy of that. So I'm not doing a whole lot of SEO testimonials here, but, or a lot of SEO tips here. But I do have one really good SEO tip that's really going to help you out. Um, Patrick McGeehan, I'm really proud of this testimonial because my, my, guy, my, my whole point is basically teaching lawyers that they can do marketing themselves. They don't have to have a marketing company. Patrick fired his marketing agency and got listed on page one of Google based solely on the advice that I've been, I was giving him. So I'm, I'm really happy that, that people are able to actually take my advice and get good results. And, and again, you guys have that, that course in your bags. So hack number 13, um, getting in the local maps. There's a lot of factors that go into it, but one of the big things is links from local websites. So you know, if you can get websites that are local to your area to actually link to your website, then you're gonna, then Google's gonna look at you as much more relevant, and much more, uh, uh, basically much more relevant to the local search. So the way to get local websites is find local youth sports organizations and go to their websites, like so uh, youth soccer, youth baseball, youth hockey, youth football, whatever it is, youth cheerleading, and look at their websites and look for the ones that have sponsors areas where they link to their, they link to, to the sponsors contact them, say, hey, we'll give you 100 bucks, 200 bucks, 300 bucks, negotiate something to get a link from their website. It maybe costs you 1,000 bucks, and you get some really, really, really good local relevant links going to your website that your competitors don't have. This works really well. This is actually one of the first steps we take whenever we onboard a new SEO client, is we always get local links, uh, and it just, it just works really, really well. All right, so finally, I've got some psychological closing closing the deal type of uh, t type of tips here. Uh, <laughs> I, I, gave, I started putting these out uh, on my YouTube channel, and uh, Tom Benner left me a testimonial that the next, he, he started using my tips, and he closed 20 clients in a row got, he, that retained him uh, based on the tips that I, I started putting out there. So I'm, I'm really happy about that. Uh, so tip number one, I use this all the time, and this is one of the most important things you can do is always, always, always give a compliment at the beginning of the consultation. It doesn't matter what you compliment, compliment something because people like people who like them. And you always have to remember, people do not remember what you say to them, they remember how you make them feel. So if you give them a compliment right away, make them feel really good, then they're going to feel good about everything and, and they're going to be much more likely to retain you because people buy things from people that they like. Think about every time uh, a, friend, uh, a friend's kid comes around with uh, some sort of fundraiser or Girl Scout cookies or whatever it is, you always buy something because you like the people and you always buy something from them. So always give a compliment at the beginning of the consultation. It works really, really well. Next, stop talking about yourself and start asking questions. People tell all of their problems to people that they trust. So if you're trying to get somebody to hire you, they have all these problems, and what you wanna do is just keep asking them questions that's gonna get them to keep telling you their problems and keep telling you their problems and keep telling you their problems. There's a simple rule. He who talks the most makes the least. Just remember that. If you just keep asking your prospects questions about their problems and say, okay, well, how's that affecting your life? How is that affecting you? What happens, you know, so you lost your job. What happens now? How are you paying your bills? All these different things, just keep getting them talking and people will open up to you. And you have to remember, everyone's favorite subject is themselves. So going back to that making people feel good, if they get to talk about themselves for 45 minutes, they're going to feel really good. Once again, they don't necessarily remember what you said, but they remember how you made them feel. So once again, it just, just get them to ask, or just get them to keep talking, keep talking, just listen to their problems and get them to tell, tell you all the problems and they will feel better and they will hire you. Okay, so you get all this and then you tell them, okay, for me to handle your DUI case, it's going to be $5,000. Or for your bankruptcy, we're going to have to start with, you know, $1,500 retainer or $3,000 retainer, whatever it happens to be. It doesn't matter how great they feel. The second you tell them the price, it's like you punch them in the stomach. Nobody wants to part with their money, right? Who here likes spending money? Anybody? 
Nobody? Okay. Nobody wants to spend their money. So what you have to do is you have to drop a related success story, almost a testimonial, right after you tell the price. After you reveal the price, if you, you got to kind of, it's like you punch them in the stomach, you got to bring them back a little bit. So you could say something like, well, it's going to cost $5,000 for us to handle your DUI. But by the way, your stop is very similar to another stop that we, we, we recently got dismissed uh, a, couple, uh, a couple months ago where the police did this and this and this. And I think that we can probably do this for, for you because with this guy, the, ki- the charges were dropped and he, you know, his employer never even found out about it. You know, so obviously you're going to have to finagle that a little bit. But if you give some sort of success story, it kind of softens the blow from the, the gut punch they just took. All right, um, another thing. You can always justify your value by showing how much it would cost not to hire you. So a uh, perfect example, um, you can say to somebody, you know, how much would it cost if you lost your license and now you can't drive to work how, and, and you lose your job because you can't drive to work anymore? And then on top of that, every time you, every, every time you uh, uh, fill out another job application, you're always going to have to check that box that says, uh, I'm a convicted felon or I'm, I've been... Uh, uh, convicted of a crime, have been arrested, whatever it is. How much is that going to cost you compared to this, you know, three thousand dollar retainer, where we can get you a solid legal defense and and make this whole thing go away? Or if you're if you're talking to a father or a mother, how much is it going to cost you over the next eighteen years to have to pay an extra three hundred or four hundred dollars in child support every single month, month after month after month? Or how much is it going to cost you by not getting the right amount of child support? for the next 18 years, every single month, you know? Where you've got to get an attorney now if you want to have money later. There's just no other, other way of handling it. The other thing is you can actually put a dollar figure to it. So we're working with a client right now in, um, we're working with a client right now who is in um, Arizona. He, he helps nurses who um, are, are about to lose their, license, their, their nursing licenses, and he charges $4,000 to, um, he charges $4,000 to, to help them prevent losing their nursing licenses. So we found that it costs nearly $500,000 over the course of a, of, of a career if you lose your nursing license. So he always says, it costs you, yes, my retainer is $4,000, but it's going to cost you $440,000 for the rest of your career to get your, to, to, if you lose your nursing license. So you've got to hire an attorney now if you want to have money in the future. Last hack is follow up with all prospects after consultations. Most of the time, they walk out of your office, they don't hire you. They, and, and life happens, they forget about you or they can't get back in touch with you, follow up with them. I promise you 10 to 15, maybe even 25% of them will hire you. That's all I got. <laughs> so, Thank you, again, Andy. Again, go to uh, lawyerslides.com and you can download this entire presentation. Thank you.